In this video, I'll show you how to compress audio in Premiere Pro and Audition. Hi everyone, I'm the Web Guru and I do tutorials on video, audio, and photography, so be sure to leave a comment and subscribe. And here inside of Premiere Pro, I've imported some audio already, and I'm going to increase the track height by double-clicking right here. Um, and you can already see visually that the first part of the audio is really loud and the rest of it is quiet. Let's listen to it. And while listening, you can also observe the levels. Hi everyone, this is an example of some audio that... So you can hear, and then you can also see that the beginning peaks at around minus six, but the rest of it is peaking down at about minus 18. So this is called dynamic range. That's the difference between the loudest and the quietest part of your audio. So we have a lot of dynamic range here, and it's gonna make it hard to work with. Um, and so the solution that I like to use is called compression. And we're gonna be able to make the audio more consistent. Now it is possible to apply compression inside of Premiere Pro, but I much prefer to do it in Adobe Audition, which has a better audio interface. And I'll show that to you in a second. So go ahead and right click on the clip inside of the timeline, and then choose Edit Clip in Adobe Audition. If for some reason this option is grayed out, then make sure you have the latest version of Audition installed on your computer. So here we are in Adobe Audition, and you can see from the waveform that the beginning of the audio is much louder. And then one thing that I also like is that I can see the actual levels over here, uh, which is very useful. So let's apply the compression now. So I'm going to go up to Effects, Amplitude and Compression, and then it's called the Single Band Compressor. So go ahead and click on that one. And then here are the most important values, uh, the threshold. The threshold, everything above the threshold is going to become compressed. Now a typical value is somewhere between minus 15 and minus 20, but I've already experimented with this clip and I actually need to lower the threshold to minus 24. And what does that mean? Well, I do have like a little graphic here. Um, and so exa for example, here is the waveform. And then the threshold, imagine a line. I've drawn like a red line across the waveform here. And it basically means anything above the red line, anything above the threshold will get compressed. So I'll show you a little graphic of that. So you can see that anything above there, anything in that red box there is going to get compressed. Now then the next question is the ratio. The ratio determines the amount of compression. Now a typical value would be two or three or four. Um, and then let's say you set the ratio to two, then that would mean that anything above the threshold gets cut in half. If you set the ratio to let's say four, then anything above the threshold will get cut to one quarter of its original. And anything above five is considered to be a lot of compression, and you do have to be a little bit more careful because then your audio might start sounding a little bit artificial or clipped. But for this clip, um, I actually do need to go up to six. Um, so this is actually a lot of compression. It's more than what is normal, but every audio clip is a little bit different. You'll have to experiment with that. Now the attack is uh, basically a measure of the delay how much of a delay is there before the compression kicks in. Um, so I like to choose a very small value, so one millisecond is very little of an attack or very little of a delay. And then the release, I also put it to a pretty small number. And now when I click on the apply button, you can see that anything above the threshold has become compressed and now the audio is a lot more even. So let's listen to it. Hi everyone, this is an example of some audio that's very loud. So now you can see that the audio is peaking at around, you know, minus 18, somewhere in that range. Um, now we have reduced the dynamic range of the clip. Uh, we've also made it quieter. Compression will make your clip quieter. 
Um, and so after compressing, I often like to do something called normalize. So I'm going to go up to favorites and then normalize to minus three. Um, and if you want to learn more about normalizing, you can um, watch another video that I've done about that topic. Um, and essentially what it does is it increases the gain of the entire clip so that it peaks at the value that you specify. So I specified minus three. You can also do minus two, minus one. Of course, you can't go above zero, but you can choose any value, and now it's peaking at minus three. Uh, I'm going to save the clip, so I'm going to go to File, Save, and then when I go back into Premiere, it's going to automatically update the clip. So I like that. Premiere Pro and Audition are connected. And now I can see clearly that the audio is a lot more even. Let's go back to the original and listen to it. Hi everyone, this is an example of some audio that... So there's a huge variation in the loud and the quiet portions of the clip. And now, since we have done the compression and the normalization... Hi everyone, this is an example of some audio that's very loud and some... Now the clip is much more even and consistent. So this is something that I like to do a lot inside of Premiere Pro. So hopefully this was uh, helpful to you. Let me know uh, in the comments if you have any questions. Be sure to uh, subscribe and like the video. Uh, I'll be producing a lot more tutorials like this. So I will see you in the next video. And in the meantime, keep learning and growing.